So welcome back students. So we were discussing the phosphoric acid production and we saw in the last lecture the production process for dihydrate so where two molecules of water is bounded to the uh, you know to the final product. So now the final product means I mean to say it is calcium sulphate. So calcium sulphate is bounded with two molecules of water. So we proceed with this. Uh, there are different uh, industries which uh, may adopt this dihydrate which we just discussed. They can also adopt the other form which is hemihydrate. Hemihydrate means as I have discussed the last lecture it is half molecule of water. So like that uh, they will adopt the technology in such a manner that it reduces its capital or the running cost. So we see this hemihydrate method and then there are also certain methods where you convert hemihydrate to dihydrate, dihydrate to hemihydrate based on the type of phosphatic ores. So in today's lecture we will see the hemihydrate process in general. So I will introduce the introduction means we have already done the phosphoric acid production. The hemihydrate uh, process I will introduce. So the raw materials remains the same as the previous lecture that is the uh, phosphatic ores. So this ores may be grinded, may not be grinded. So we will see that later. Then the production process for hemihydrate. Then what you do is we the issue is till here it's, it is fine hemihydrate. But when you go ahead, uh, there are certain losses of this P2O5. So P2O5 is acidic in nature. Is H3PO4 in the presence of water. So this water is also the acidic water or the acidic phosphoric acid also goes through the gypsum that is calcium sulphate. So that is not good. You should clean this up because the gypsum you produce or the calcium sulphate you produce it should be pure and pure. So for those we have the recrystallization process. So recrystallization means if you have the final product as hemihydrate you can recrystallize back to dihydrate and do the separation or you may have only hemi dihydrate you combine both of them together. So it means that in the intermediate you can take out one product and then proceed and then again take out another product from dihydrate. Or you can also have uh, both of this process separate but connected together. So we will see these three processes these are all called as recrystallization process. So the basic processes are two which we discussed one is the dihydrate another is the hemihydrate. So this is this process flow sheet is similar what we saw earlier. So you know this is the your main reaction the calcium phosphate the ore reacts with sulfuric acid to form uh, the phosphoric acid and I have told this phosphoric acid as a weak uh, solution of phosphoric acid is again sent back to the ore because if we do not send it back as I discussed it will form calcium sulphate layer on top of the ore which will prevent further reaction. So the same thing also happens there. So you see there is a phosphate rock, the water. These are called the attack tanks. What are the attack tank means? They are attacked means this acid is there. So your sulfuric acid present here. This reaction takes place. Then uh, it is sent to the aging tank. The aging tank is the tank where you let the solution to stay there for the nucleation to occur. Once the nucleation occurs, it means you are getting a mixture of solid and liquid. Now the solid and liquid is then separated in this hemihydrate filter. So hemihydrate filter works on the same manner as for the dihydrate that is you have the pan filter as I told you circular pan filters. So you have a process where you apply vacuum so you separate out the acid and then after that you reverse means you apply pressure so the cake comes out from the filter likewise the process is made continuous. So you get in the, the only thing is what I want to emphasize is that you are having a higher P2O5 concentration 40 to 46 percent okay and the bright product is half of H2O okay the half molecule means it is hemihydrate. So you are having the sulfuric acid added here as before and then uh, you know there are certain things which I told you that you have some solution where you may have the silica calcium all this some part of calcium silica may come out from this aging tank when they are cooled that is why they are cooled and when a vacuum is applied prior to that it condenses and it is forms a hydrofluorosilic acid H2SIF6. 
Then there are certain gases which are also coming out from the attack tanks. The attack tanks, when it comes out, it goes through a venturi scrubber because I told you it may consist of various ions. So, these ions need to be in contact with a scrubber. So, while it is in contact, it removes those ions and thus we have the waste gas. So, this reaction is happening here, attack tanks, because this is a weak solution. So, the weak solution means the weak solution of phosphoric acid comes from the aging tank. So, it reacts with the ore present to form this calcium hydrophosphate. This calcium hydrophosphate as I told you now reacts with the sulfuric acid to form CaSO4. I have written only CaSO4, I have not written into half H2O. The reason being that this half H2O is the type of crystal which is formed in the hemihydrate filter. Okay. So, you have the gypsum, in this case calcium sulphate is the gypsum and you have phosphoric acid. Now, First, we have to see what is the difference between the dihydrate and the hemihydrate. One is the processes are identical to those of the dihydrate method except that grinding may not be necessary. So, you see here you do not require grinding, it means you are saving some capital cost. So, you do not need a grinder. So, it is this method is suitable for any type of ore. So, the calcium sulphate is precipitated in the hemihydrate form, just now I discussed. So, it enables to produce 40 to 52 percent of P2O5, resulting in a significant energy savings. Because P2O5, more the amount or the more the strength it is produced, the more it is required or lesser evaporation needs to be done. If you really collect, we talked about the evaporation process flow sheet. So, in a way you are also reducing cost from the evaporation part. The evaporation part means you are reducing the cost in order to concentrate, you do not need to concentrate this P2O5. So, what are the main advantages? The advantages I have already shown you, the capital savings. So, what is the capital savings? Because it is a purer acid. So, when it is a purer acid, it tends to contain substantially less amount of sulphate and the suspended solids less amount of free sulphate and the suspended solid. So, your filtration cost is lowered down. Also, it has lower levels of aluminum, lower levels of aluminum and fluorine. Okay. So, because of this you require uh, less cost in filtration. So, then uh, the lower rock grinding requirement because because of the severe reaction conditions, we do not need to grind it. So, the grinding cost is also saved just now I, because the reactions here is different to those the reaction conditions is different to those of the dihydrate. But there are some disadvantages, what is it? What is the filtrate, filtration rate? So, what do you mean by the filtration rate? It means the filtration rate means the hemihydrate crystals. So, you have the hemihydrate crystals forming. So, when the hemihydral crystals is formed, they are uh, they are very small and they are less means they are formed, but they are less well formed than the dihydrate. If I compare the dihydrate crystals, they are easily formed, they can be separated easily because the size is bigger. But here they are formed, their crystals are not formed and the slurries are very difficult to handle. The slurries are very difficult to handle which makes the filtration rate as one of the disadvantage means you cannot separate out the phosphoric acid part from the cake. So, that is one. Another is the water balance, there is the phosphate losses. Okay. So, the water balance consideration, because of the water balance consideration, there is restricts the amount of wash water. Okay. It will restrict the amount of wash water to be used in the filtration step. So, some amount of soluble and insoluble P2O5, soluble and insoluble P2O5 may also be present in the filter cake. So, it may go within the filter cake, it may go along with the filter cake, so amount of soluble and insoluble P2O5. So, there is we call as phosphate losses. Then the third disadvantage is the scaling. What is the scaling? Because hemihydrate is not a stable form of the calcium sulphate crystals, because there is a chance of this calcium sulphate hemihydrates getting converted to gypsum.
and if the gypsum is formed then there will be acute scaling in the reactor. So, what they do in industry they add some filler material some additives so as to you know to prevent that uh, hemihydrate uh, crystal formation. So, to prevent it the reaction going backward so that gypsum is not formed. So, they do some add some additives. Then uh, you have the, the cake because the cake has this soluble and insoluble Pe2O5 the filter cake is not pure it will be acidic in nature that is another problem there is a impurity in the filter cake. Then finally, the disadvantage is the corrosion. So, there are susceptible items of equipment such as agitators and slurry pumps because of the higher temperature when we talk about the temperature is almost close to 100 degrees Celsius and the concentration of the acid is around 40 to 50 percentage of P2O5 as discussed in the previous flow sheet. So, it makes the concentration intense or it is higher as compared to dihydrate. So, these are the different disadvantages one is the filtration rate because of the crystals the filtration rate is reduced the phosphate rocks because phosphate losses because of soluble and insoluble P2O5 the scaling scaling is the formation of gypsum filter cake impurity filter cake impurity it will not be pure filter cake it will have some suspended amount of P2O5 in it and finally, the corrosion corrosion means because of the intense condition that is high temperature and your concentration of acid it may corrode the reactor vessel. So, these are the outline of the advantages and disadvantages of hemihydrate process. So, this was about the hemihydrate process. So, in the recrystallization process, so we have finished two process the dihydrate and the hemihydrate. Now, the issue is the P2O5 recovery efficiency in the single stage right now whatever we have discussed in the previous slides or in the previous lecture are all single stage. So, you know what you do you have the reactor you have the aging tanks then you have the filter you just recover it and that is it you are getting the product and byproduct. So, the ranges the percentages of P2O5 ranges from 94 to 95 percent and 90 to 94 percent for P2O5. Okay. The recovery, recovery means how much we can recover the P2O5 from the filter cake. As I told you some phosphate will be passing through the calcium silicate cake, calcium sulphate cake the byproduct gypsum will have disposal or usage issues if some of the P2O5 losses are retained. So, the issue is the P2O5 should not stay in the gypsum crystals or the calcium sulphate crystals. So, in order to make it as minimum as possible we actually use certain temperature and the concentration. So, if you recollect in the last lecture I have shown you the phase diagram of calcium sulphate dihydrate and the calcium sulphate hemihydrate. So, if you tune the amount of sulphuric acid to be added or the temperature. So, you can easily go forward between hemihydrate and dihydrate. So, that is why when calcium calcite is ultimately separated because this loss of P2O5 may be regained. So, this can we take out this P2O5 back from the filter cake. So, if we take it back then it has to be recrystallized to its opposite hydrate. Okay. So, it is produces a cleaner calcium sulphate product. So, you are, I hope you understand. So, what do you mean by recrystallize it means it is in a particular state because the calcium sulphate is at a particular state when it is at P2O5. Now, if you want to take out that particular P2O5 then you have to change the nature of the crystals. So, if it is in let us say hemihydrate you convert to dihydrate, if it is in dihydrate you convert to hemihydrate. So, automatically because of the change in the crystal size or the crystal type the P2O5 will come out from the filter kick. So, that is what the three basic processes talk about. The first process is the, the hemihydrate recrystallization that is why the term recrystallization appears. Hemihydrate recrystallization process HRC, hemidihydrate process then dihydrate hemihydrate process. So, these are given by certain acronyms you can see HRC, HDH, DH and HH process. We will be talking about these acronyms one by one. Now, the three basic rules let us understand these three different roots. So, what happens you add the acid in one of the root which is the HRC. So, this is what I am talking is this is the HRC process hemihydrate recrystallization HRC. 
we are adding acid under hemihydrate production condition then we are recrystallizing it to dihydrate. So, we are changing from hemihydrate to dihydrate H goes to D. So, how will you change it? Change the reactant condition, change the amount of concentration of sulfuric acid. So, you do this. If you do that, what you do when you crystallize, recrystallize back to dihydrate, so you do not separate out in the hemihydrate. So, whatever solution you have, you simply convert it to again back to dihydrate. Then you separate the product. So, hemihydrate is formed and then you convert to dihydrate, then you do a filtration step. I hope you are understanding because it is a recrystallization. Another process talks about acid addition under hemihydrate condition. So, now the product is now separated. So, it means whatever product after you have hemihydrate, this is separated and then recrystallized takes place from hemihydrate to dihydrate. So, the filtration and the liquid whatever you are remaining returns back to the process. So, this is called hemidihydrate process. Okay. So, what are the difference between these two? So, there is no intermediate step, you do not take out the filter, the cake in between, in this you take out the cake in between. Now, the third one is called the DHHH. So, this one uh, is HDH and the third one is called DHHH. So, what is this? You acidulate, acidulate means you add acid, then you recrystallize the hemihydrate, then again you do the same thing for dihydrate. I mean it is a method where uh, I mean you can combine like today's lecture whatever hemihydrate we are discussing, then uh, you have another dihydrate. So, first process hemihydrate then dehydrates when the two different process connected together. So, that is why it is called D and H dihydrate then hemihydrate. Okay. So, you do the recrystallization in between. So, once the process is complete recrystallize it again you start and you get dihydrate. So, these three processes we will discuss in detail. So, this is the first that is the HRC process hemihydrate recrystallization process. So, it is presents a multi reactor dihydrate procedure. The first reactor works in a hemihydrate settings while subsequent reactors operate in gypsum rehydration friendly condition. So, what we do is we use of the seed dihydrate crystals recovered from the filter seed. So, gypsum derived is more pure. So, if you see gypsum which is derived from here it is more pure. So, if you see the entire process is the same or uh, this is the premixer, digester, you add sulfuric acid, phosphate rock, water, then the scrubber, fan, all these uh, you know it is the same process, the same utility which we discussed earlier. Now, this is the hydration tank. Now, if you see in this hydration tank, we are adding water. So, it means this premixer and digester, because I am not shown here separately, you are having a solid and liquid part here, solid and liquid part here. But instead of taking out, instead of taking out the filter, it is not been taking out, we are directly adding water, okay. we are adding water and we make it dihydrate. So, in the dihydrate, the filtration occurs instead of hydration. So, it is a hydration tank. So, whatever hemihydrate you are forming, there is no intermediate step. So, you convert directly to dihydrate and then you apply filtration. So, in this case, your strength of phosphoric acid is pretty high 40 to 46 percent and the byproduct is CSO4 to H2. Okay? So, this is what. So, in this case, uh, we use the seed dehydrate crystals to recover from the filter feed. Okay? So, what are the advantages of HRC process? It is a single stage filtration. So, now again see you it is a single stage, we are not doing filtration in intermediate. It is a proven product with sedimentary rock, produces a pure gypsum, higher P2O5 SNG. What does this mean? 97 percent? The 97 percent implies that around 97 percent of P2O5 can be recovered. But only issue is you have a slightly higher acid strength 30 to 32 percent because not I mean not it is the advantage and the advantage is you are having a lower sulfuric acid concentration and the lower filter area. 
So, if you see, if you see these are the two which is means one is the capital cost, one is the recurring cost. So, in this way you can lower the cost of production. But then uh, you have the disadvantages because unlike hemihydrate you need to grind it, it requires a fine rock grind, it requires a sulfuric acid dilution, large recrystallization volume required. So, the tank volume becomes bigger because you need to do recrystallization. It may dissolve more partially soluble impurities. Okay. So, like those which are not soluble, partially soluble, those are metal ion, it may also crystallize. So, requires 32 percent acid storage and evaporation. So, in this process, you require evaporation to make it concentrated to at least 40 45 percent post precipitation before and after evaporation, and it requires subsequent materials of construction. Okay. These are the disadvantages of HRC process. Now, we come to the hemi dihydrate process hemi dihydrate process. What is this hemi dihydrate process? Now, if you see the in the hemi hydrate process, so in this it is possible uh, to separate the hemi hydrate before recrystallization. So, if you see the digesters and the reactors are similar, you add sulfuric acid, you phosphate rock, do a scrubbing, you take out the waste gases and uh, do a flash cooler to separate out the hydro silicic acid, but here the hemihydrate filler. So, hemihydrate first the H comes, the H is here. So, you take out the portion because you have the say, say this is the liquid part and the solid part comes here. So, liquid goes here. So, what is the liquid part here? Liquid part here is phosphoric acid of this much strength. So, you are taking out the product here, then you pass the solid here, then add hydration tank means water is already pressure, you hydrate, you add the water molecule to make it dihydrate. So, the dihydrate if it is formed, then you apply the pan filter which we discussed for the dihydrate process. So, when you add water, it what it will do? It will take out the byproduct which is the gypsum and uh, likewise again you add the weak, take out the weak phosphoric acid back to the digester. This I hope you understand why we do this because the weak part of phosphoric acid is sent back to the digester or the aging tank in order to prevent the surface formation of calcium sulphate, calcium sulphate on the ore. Okay. So, this is another the hemi dihydrate process. So, it is advantage is directly produced this much 40 to 50 percent. It is produces a purer acid, it has low sulphate, aluminum and fluoride content, it is a limited post precipitation. It means if you take out the phosphoric acid, there is less amount of any precipitation. Use as coarse rock, low sulphuric acid consumption, high P2O5 SNG, it is more than 97 percent and produces a purer gypsum. Only issue is capital cost. Now, you have a two stage filtration, first filtration for hemihydrate, the next filtration for dihydrate. So, limited number of rocks are now processed with this particular flow sheet. So, care required in design and the shutdown, again it requires a high recrystallization volume and a high capital cost. The high capital cost you must understand because it is a you need a additional step, a filtration step. Okay. So, this was all about HDH, hemi dihydrate process. Now, the last process is called dihydrate hemihydrate process. So, uh, what you do is uh, here sulfuric acid, it is a I mean you can uh, assume that uh, you have two process combined together, but with the catch is first the dihydrate comes, the hemihydrates come later. Earlier it was the hemihydrate, then dihydrate. Again, you have an extra step. So, the point of this is you can vary the P2O5 concentration. So, what they do is the dehydrate filter again here it recovers. So, if you recollect the previous slide was around 40 percent, but here it is only 33.33 to 38 percent of P2O5. Now, subsequent when you dehydrate here you form hemihydrate filter. So, you form from dihydrate to here you are converting to dihydrate to hemihydrate. Okay. So, again here you have the liquid solution coming out in the form of liquids 
in the form of the phosphoric acid okay and the solid comes here solid part comes here so you have the hemihydrate filter so again you add water you get the byproduct and the weak phosphoric acid so you can say that uh, if i just draw it's a two process together hemi dihydrate or hemihydrate so it means the there are succeeding dehydration process the succeeding dehydration process requires around 20 to 30 percent p2o5 okay so in this dehydration tank uh, what it says is it requires around 20 to 30 percent of p2o5 and 10 to 20 percent of sulfuric acid okay so, the strength of product acid is 33 to 38 percent. So, these are the three approaches. So, just now I discussed. So, it is flexible with irrespective of the rock source, it is a proven process, produces a pure hemihydrate. So, this is pretty high 98 percent, higher acid strength, lower sulfuric acid consumption. These are the advantages. Disadvantage is again the same thing two stage filtration. So, it is you know you have high capital cost because you have an extra step the filtration step requires steam for the conversion requires 35 percent acid storage. The rock slurry feed is unacceptable. It requires a final rehydration of hemihydrate to gypsum. Okay. Final it requires a rehydration because hydration means addition of water rehydration means taking out the water normally requires rock grinding care is required in design and shutdown these are general disadvantage now the further the gypsum which is produced may still contain some amount of water so what you do uh, you have this repulping process this is not a process of manufacturing of sulfuric acid it is production of clean gypsum so what is what is happening is you have the filter you take out the acid this is the phosphoric acid the product now we are this is the product it goes away that is we have discussed with these previous three methods so then the gypsum goes in the repulping tank okay once it goes into the repulping tank uh, then uh, what you do you have a repulp filter again this repulp filter it will have solid and some parent from liquid you do a filtration by adding water feed into plant so you take a feed of water from outside add here and then again you know you in all these methods please remember you are trying to just tune the operating condition temperature and the amount of acid so here also you are doing you are adding a specific amount of water and the filtration occurs you get clean gypsum so the clean gypsum means whatever remaining is filtrate tank the remaining water it is again sent back it is then made in contact some of them are sent to the repulping tank and some of them are sent to the filter so what are the advantages it is pure gypsum high efficiency uh, these advantages high capital cost obviously because again you are adding another filtration step so earlier already we have one filtration step in dihydrate or hemihydrate you are adding another one but only thing is uh, it will be able to give without any water molecules so it will get clean gypsum so I will just like to conclude this lecture so the phosphoric acid but only thing is we will still see what are the different pollution what are the causes of pollution that is what type of phosphate or the sulphur gases which may come out from the vent due to the vacuum so how they are taken care of their abatement that we will discuss in the next lecture so I will suggest you go to this phosphoric acid booklet number 428 from the European Fertilizer Manufacturer Association and also visit this book Sikumar Kokial chemical process technology simulation where what it is they have uh, given a flow sheet uh, flow sheet suppose those who know Aspen they can simulate the flow sheet in Aspen that will be a good exercise to know the what is the desired byproduct and there I think you know you in experiment you cannot do change the operating condition but in the flow sheet you can always change the operating condition thank you mm -hmm.